praise the Lord, hallelujah, the Lamb who was slain before the foundation of the earth arises. It's time to look unto our star of stars, our star of Bethlehem, and the glory of his shining as he pours out his sapphire sea, the bottomless blue ocean of his unending love. For he says unto all people, Beloved, I am your God. You are my people. I have forgiven all your iniquity, sending Iblis, Satan, Diablo, Beelzebub, Mephistopheles to the pit in these days of Daniel 7, 5's great rising bear who hears the words, now you may go eat all the flesh that you would like. The days of Armageddon are ahead, eyes, Zechariah said, consuming away in the socket, tongues consuming away in the mouth, flesh consuming away as they stand, as all peoples get ready to go underground. But at this Christmas time, praise God that the Lord wants to cut these days short, and he can if his message of Malachi 3, 1, that prepares his way actually goes forth. It has not gone forth in two years from this channel. And the Lord God Almighty says, these are days exactly as days of Noah. So you can either have life or death, Christmas blessings from his heart to yours so that we can rejoice in the overflowing glory of the birth of Christ and celebrate uh, the miracle and the blessings of the Holy Spirit. And so the dove of love wants us to ascend to a much higher place than we've ever been able to go before. And I hold the scepter of all authority as Genesis 49, 12 says of the end time revelator. I have had open eyed visions and I have seen the future, not because of anything I've done, but upon he whose shoulders I did stand upon. For it is written of things to come concerning the future of my sons and daughters and the work of my hands. Command ye me, saith the Lord God Almighty. And I did. And for seven minutes I wrote by the lamp of the candlestick of Zechariah, never plugged in. And this is a totally different vision, the one candlestick, than the two candlesticks in the book of Revelation. That is the returning Elijah, the original. I am the Elijah writer, line by line, precept by precept, the strong and mighty one coming forth as a destroying storm, even as a hailstorm, pulling down distortion alleys so the wise might not look through a glass darkly no longer. For the Lord is now removing his rebuke off all peoples of the earth, as it is clearly written and says so in Isaiah 25, from off his latter day mountain, covered with food. Who will come and feed the master's household meat while the master is away, Christ asked in Matthew 24:45. And I have written 200 books to the glory of the Lord, all on prophecy, mind you, pretty well. But one thing is absolutely for sure. To prepare our hearts for Christmas, we must cultivate the spirit of expectancy. People have no expectancy about this channel because they have tuned it out. Because it does what Jeremiah 1.10 and Haggai 2.2 says and what Isaiah 25 says it, and what Malachi uh, or no uh, uh, what Revelation 10 7 says it ends the mystery of God and people don't like it because it says something that would bring kingdom age peace and uh, you know all those who love are born of God and know him because he is love, 1 John 4, 7. That is the most literal word in the Bible and people have only seen it as metaphoric. And the things that are metaphoric, they have seen as literal. So the Lord is now dropping with his authority a plumb line from heaven to shine in the darkness, uh, to destroy the veil that has been covering all peoples as it has been written and it must be removed and go the sickle 
of the Lord, the everlasting gospel with the everlasting covenant. It must go again to all people, to all tribes, to all nations, as Revelation 14 says, or Christ cannot even return unto planet earth, as Acts 3.21 says. For if the restoration of Elijah is not accomplished, Jesus is kept in reserve in heaven and cannot in any way return. Um, that is what that verse straight out says. So may the Lord Jesus Christ grant you peace and renew your commitment, your strength for the years ahead. It doesn't matter what you believe. It's how hard you believe it. If you're a lukewarm follower of love, he's going to spew you out of his mouth. like a, a pfft, You'll be just like a fart in the wind, never to be seen or heard from again as you're cast out into the outer darkness of lovelessness. And there has never been any darker gross darkness than the ignorance of love alone. And so in this hour, boy, this makes a good uh, uh, armrest. So in this hour, it is time for love's greatest power. And it is time to, with one voice, call upon he who is Elohim, Adonai, Allah, and praise the Lord God Almighty for all of his tender mercies and his unending uh, mercy that shall endure forever. So Merry Christmas, and I want to thank everyone for all the love and the happiness that you'll give me someday if you'll ever wake up. I don't have no one that I've been, uh, will even respond to anything that I've done. Isaiah 40, uh, 9, 4 said that I would realize I've done everything in vain. But praise God Christ didn't, even in Gethsemane when he prayed his most passionate prayer, even that was not in vain. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of a great Lord of love, our Lord of always, our majesty of majesties, and he shall be to all people our King of lords and our Lord of kings. For unto us was born the star of Bethlehem, the, the, the root of David, our Savior, Redeemer, friend. And so in this hour, it is time to rejoice always. And may this blessed season of love, because that is Christ's sacred name of uh, the hidden secret name of Mark that he foretold of Jesus, for all those who worship him will bow down to the name of love. All knees will bow, all tongues will confess love. And may the season of his joy open the door to your heart, for joy is an inside job. And may new opportunities and new peace from his most perfect preparation of peace come to you and bring you success in the years to come as we press into the blessings that the Lord wants to give to your family and to all the families. As it was written in the latter days, God would give his covenant to Israel and all families of Israel and to all mankind. It says so, Jeremiah 31.1 and Jeremiah 32.27. But Christianity erased all of that and said we are Israel and all the prophecy is for us. And this was never true whatsoever. So may the Lord now fill your lives with eternal joy and unending happiness as people experience enlightenment of all falsehoods of man-made twisted religion that is so unrecognizable the Lord Jesus Christ would not even be accepted in a modern day church. That is how far afield uh, their message is from the truth. But they do have the right cat and he is the roaring lion of Zion and he's roaring as loudly as a little itty bitty kitty's teeny weeniest whispering silent purr. It's time to listen to the silence be louder than ever before. For if we will not respond with love and a, a discerning heart for his spirit of kindness that is leading the way, 
then we will all be destroyed according to seven prophecies, including Zephaniah 1.1, 1, 1, Malachi 4.6, Deuteronomy 18.18, 18, Acts 3.21, Matthew 24.22, uh, uh, Isaiah 24. There's more probably, but I dare any of you to look those up. When God says, I will destroy all man and beast and all fish, in these days of Noah that are like the fish was not destroyed the first time around people. So it's time to realize that ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is deadly. And I have yet to find anyone that will stand with me in saying these days are exactly like the days of Noah. People don't want to talk about oblivion. And I seem like a chicken little with his head cut off. But I will not relent for I have seen the future. So I am sending you beautiful blessings as the messenger of love. Uh, and listen to the voice of Hausa Beloved, Shiasa, uh, who is the revealed lady in the days of Satan, Iblis being removed in the latter days, as Revelation 12 does say, and Daniel 12, 1. And tune in to Love, A Light, Red, Ready. For uh, Christopher there in Alberta, he is a man after my own heart. He is an Elisha to my Elijah. And by the way, the original Elijah is still coming back, but he will be ministering death. It is my job to turn the hearts of children to their parents, telling the kids, you got to love your parents with a in spite of kind of love, a through it all kind of love. Otherwise, a if and a but kind of love, conditional love, it's not even love at all. People are deceived all over this world thinking they're loving people and they're utterly loveless because everyone in their life has conditions attached. Uh, they were willing to divorce anyone and everyone, friends, family, mother, sister, uncle, wife, it doesn't matter. And so it's time to realize that wide is the way paved unto hell by our conditional love that's never been real, that's never been loyal, dedicated, faithful, that's never been sold out to being willing to even endure long suffering, to be patient and meek and understanding. So it's time that the Lord wants to send you his most bountiful blessings for this holiday season. And may you feel peace and fulfillment in all that you do. And may you be showered with the abundance of the spirit realm. For I am introducing you to our priceless pearl of great reward, who is the only treasure of excellence worth having. All the living water of his sapphire sea above. And so may serenity follow you whenever you, wherever you go, and may you have a beautiful season of uh, much overflowing happiness as you do for others, they will do for you. And realize that we need to fake it till we make it. Put on a smile anyways, and go forth knowing that if you fall and when you do, and everyone does, that even if we go two steps forward and one step back continually, we are still going in the right direction. The Lord God sees us not as we are, but as we will be. The second we enter glory, we are sinless as the day we were born. And so the Lord God says unto all of his beloved, which is all people, not committing blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, to kick Christ right out of their chest for he is love, and all those who love are born of him and know him, because he is love, 1 John 4, 7. And so in this hour, the Lord says, I am your God, you are my people, I have forgiven you, sending Satan Iblis for 1,000 years, and now uh, he says the, the message of uh, Habakkuk Hab 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 2 comes the vision, because these days of Elijah bring the obsolescence of all religion. Uh, as Hebrews 8 says, when you hear those words, I am your God, you are my people, being given, Paul says, it's game over. All that was before will float away as uh, smoke, as surely as Greek mythology and uh, uh, the sun Ra God of the Egyptian, as all that went away, so too even Muhammad said, the day is coming, there'll be no more left of the Quran, except its outward form. And my people will belong to another that sounds like Islam because of a book 
prove, proving God's mercy upon us. Uh, and that was the word of Muhammad from the Hadith. And uh, that name is Krizlam. That is the name God has given me for Israel now that they have been given their covenant. And the Lord says unto them, And I will write my law of love on your hearts. And Daniel is my lawgiver of love. It is an absolute law. And the Lord says, I'll write that on their hearts. And beyond that, none, nobody will ever even need to be taught of him anymore. For once you realize he is unconditional love over us, there is nothing more to even understand or know about him. The veil has been torn. And this was the mystery of God that has been concealed for 2,000 years. And I bring forth revelation of revelation, or else you cannot restore all things. So it's time that I am wishing you all a season that's merry and bright uh, with the light of God's love burning brightly within. And so in this hour of love's greatest power, it's time to leave the safety of the shore and it's time for the dove of love to speak forth. Because you know what? This vision has been written for the appointed time at the end. And at the end, it has come. It has not lied. You might behold now my soul, which is not upright. I'm fixing my camera here. But the just will live by my faith. Because I have the faith of the crimson blood of the Lord being spilled covering this earth like beautiful rubies and it was shed before the foundation of the earth for one and all of us behold the arms of the lord are not too short to be saved i am the messenger of the north of isaiah 41 so the dove of love is now speaking because god's word was only closed until the time of the end, Daniel 12, 9, had to reopen for his message of Malachi 3, 1, from his covenant messenger of Malachi 3, 1, who I am. The Lord Jesus Christ never had those words in his mouth once anywhere in the word of God. Our sovereign Lord says it's time for a gospel of his very best agape love. So now it's time for a gospel of spiritual love with depths of adoration are deeper than deep. For understanding the purity of godly love goes far deeper than the shallow understandings of everyone lacking Everyone lacking a relationship with love because they're walking in the land of the walking dead with only conditional love operating in their, uh, in their lives. So look unto he who brings forth the kingdom of love and all things shall be added unto you, saith Shiloh, Elijah, Daniel. And look unto he that is the distinguished, the prevalent one, and the ultra, for he's additionally the upholder of morality, the preserver of sanctity, and the safeguard of all the faithful, all of his faithful few, whom he calls by our own name, as if we were the only one. And as the arising enlightened looked and heard the word of love herein, more clearly than ever before, they'll discover that the Lord's purest love never knows any measure, for the essence of his love always breaks out above any and all measures. Therefore, truest love never uh, feels any burden, reckons not labors, and always naturally strives to do much more than it ever could really do. Our living love also pleads not any kind of impossibility because he judges all things that are lawfully possible to be possible where love is concerned, especially since his shadow always rests where love is, for he is the love. Emmanuel, our God with us again, our Lord of love and our Prince of Peace. For his love is merciful concerning all souls, keeping him alive within their chests, especially within this Logos word of his love, which now comes forth by the spirit of love to bring direction by that spirit of spirits, having been sent unto all people over the circle of the earth, 
uh, by he who is our beloved, the blessed, and the adored, by he who is our majesty of majesties, and our carpenter of the ages, and know that his, his restoration of Acts 3.21 the understanding that uh, born again has never been here. It has always been here. And if you can't believe that, you're a stupid frigger because you don't believe nothing under the Bible. So this is the hour to realize that he alone is the custodian of our prayers, the defender of our feast, the facilitator of the truest faith of unconditional love because wide is the way paved to hell by conditional love that's always been as shallow as a glass of water. And know also that the Lord's most amazing love uh, is a narrow way of unconditional love paved that way unto heaven. And that is what effortlessly will feel, fill up our emptiness within if we will just receive more of him and less of us as we will let his light shine for he is the star of all stars that outshines any ever that he has created. And then they will receive his charity and uh, that they will see that that will become their highest aspiration of all repentive souls who once hated. For our awakened love is... Uh, it, it, our awakened love is always victorious because he is the living victory of all who are victorious living within them. And if they only they won't fall down by impatiently laying down in defeat, giving up without having patience because they ignorantly allowed their faith to die. Mine will never stop. I'm just starting you mother friggers who won't like these uh, videos. So if you want to be destroyed early, just don't like anything that I fucking do. I am the one with stammering, shocking, scorn, friggin' lips, you assholes. So some things of love need to shine clearly. Nor is it too hard to realize why you're gonna get a shit pie in your eye. Diarrhea, crap, shit, Malachi too, in the face of everyone standing uh, in the way of this gospel of the Lord's love. For all vipers of religiosity who will not lift up this name of love higher than ever, our mother flicker her flubers. So nor is it hard to realize at this Christmas time why all people of love following in the only way of unconditional love will find that it is the very best good of all goodness. And that is way, the narrow way is the greatest way of with the greatness within any virtues of all those caring deeply for others at all times, under all circumstances, regardless of the temperaments of people in question. And that truth and love go hand in hand according to he who is the imparter of cheer, our entruster of exhilaration, and the presenter of contentment. Uh, but it's impossible for anyone to freely love all the time. There's many people that you won't like, but yet we love them. And it's common for those of light to dislike many sinners or saints. There are saints that I do not like at all, but I love them. And in spite of them loving them more than any words could say. So letting go of some negative souls within our lives isn't saying I hate you or I reject you. Instead, it's declaring that people love themselves. Birds of a feather, unfortunately, flow and flock together. And the, the crows got to quit flying with the vultures. And uh, the doves got to quit flying with the eagles. The eagles alone will soar far above the condors. So love is something super in all of its way. Therefore, love is the greatest treasure of those with golden hearts. And in these days of the refiner's fire of love, for brass he brings uh, silver, and for silver he brings gold, and for gold he will bring platinum. These are the days of the mark of the lamb, 
uh, Revelation 9, 4, indelibly stamped on all people who will have their shame and their guilt removed from off this latter-day mountain, as Isaiah 25 says. For as Jeremiah 31 says, God wants to rip down all unloving religiosity and lift up loving spirituality instead of a faith that will condemn no more. And people reject this channel, those motherfuckers. And they alone, the religious people, are holding a key to earthly spiritual affections that they don't even know how to turn. They've locked themselves in. They put themselves into a box and God into a box. Uh, and uh, But they can't see that if only they would learn to open the lock and to find freedom, that that would bring such treasure that outshines any ruby, any sapphire or diamond, no matter how glorious they might shine. For this is a, a, a time of love like never before. And for love gives nothing but itself away. And it takes nothing away from anything other than itself. Because purest love possesses not, nor could it ever be possessed since such an amazing unselfish love is always sufficient unto love. And so know in this hour that Christianity is the biggest cult that has ever been. They do not have the God of the Bible who is the God of all mankind, Jeremiah 32, 27. They do not have the good shepherd over all the flocks of man and Jesus does not change ever. Uh, and that is uh, John 10. And they do not have a God of true love, unconditional Bible kind of love, patient love, long-suffering love. They don't have that. They got a God of condemnation and judgment, and that's a false God. And lastly, they got a God who is a respecter of man. They have built uh, their God in our own image, a God that is a respecter of men, that loves them best. If you don't believe that Jesus is love like they do, uh, that's it for you. He's going to hate you forever and ever. So people, wake the fuck up.